Are you ready to take your vectors, explainer videos, and just motion graphics to the next level by creating a quick, fake, 3D camera movement right here in After Effects. Now I've done this tutorial before in different circumstances. We've created a fake parallax effect for photos. I recently created a fake 3D look for vector motion graphic scenes. Uh, and they certainly have their uses, but this technique I'm teaching in this video is something that can be pulled off incredibly fast if you want to just have a little bit of fake 3D camera movement in your scene. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, not Soundduck Film. I hope you're doing excellent today. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of After Effects tutorials to come. And before we jump into the video, be sure to smash that like button because it helps us out so much. But with that said, let's jump in, let's get started. Alrighty, so there's two ways of pulling this off. I'm gonna show you the best way first. That's gonna be the cleanest and probably the quickest way to do it. So what you're gonna do when you have a vector scene like this, you're probably gonna pull it in from Adobe Illustrator. And if you don't have an Illustrator file, I, the second way will be your way to go. But if you have this, say, your vector scene here in Adobe Illustrator and you have it in layers, maybe you download the scene from freepix.com or wherever, what you're gonna wanna do is just grab your group here, come here to the hamburger icon and click on release layers to sequence. So now you have all these into its own layers, you can bring it here to the top. And then all you're gonna do is go to file, save as. All right, so now take your save file and bring it into the project panel of After Effects. I'll ask you how to import it, make sure to set the composition and click OK. And go ahead and create a new composition and click OK. And then import that imported Illustrator file into your composition and you can go ahead and scale this up. And make sure you turn on continuously rasterize right here. And what we're gonna do is take our composition right here in the project panel and we'll go to edit, duplicate. And we'll go ahead and take our scene, we'll just duplicate it down here in the project panel. And we'll alt and click the duplicated project here in the project panel and just bring it into the timeline here. And that will automatically duplicate. Now what we're gonna do is name the top one map. And this is where we're gonna create our depth map uh, for the scene. So what we're gonna do is go into this map layer and here's our scene that we created. And we kind of see like everything's kind of isolated in its own layers. And this is gonna make it very easy to create a depth map. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select one of our layers, go to effect, generate, and we're gonna grab fill. And we'll go ahead and set our color to black. So the goal here is to create a depth map of a range of colors ranging from black to white. And what we want to do is make the objects that we really want to show up in the parallax fake 3D look to be black. We really want to have focus on it. And everything else that doesn't really require to have that attention to detail should be white. So maybe background and foreground objects should be white, while some of the main focus of the scene, say the house, needs to be a darker color. So what we can do is take our fill effect, we can copy it, find some other layers here, and we'll paste it to, say, these trees over here. That one's fine. We obviously need to apply this to the house, so make sure that's black. So I just applied the fill effect to this tr big tree here. This is really where I wanna create some more dimension, some more depth. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit more uh, of a medium gray, and then I'll copy this, and we'll start applying this to some of the other areas in the mid-ground of the scene. So this tree right here is good. You know, maybe the leaves up here as well. And once we start diving into the background of the scene, I'm gonna go ahead and set everything to white because I really wanna make sure that everything behind the house isn't part of the main focus of the scene. I'm even gonna keep the foreground white as well. Okay, so this is my scene completely separated in depth. Now you can get a little bit more detailed with this. I'll show you some other examples here, but your results are not gonna be as spread out. So here I create a very a, you know, detailed uh, depth map with just you know one object in the black or two objects here in the black uh, as the, as that's gonna be the primary focus of the scene while we have everything else here in different shades of gray getting wider towards the back. This just has a little bit more detail, but from what I found, keeping it simpler is going to increase the dramatic use of the effect. So this is good and simple and very easy to do. So with our map all completely set up, we're gonna go back into our composition and we have our map here. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off. So what we're gonna do is grab our bottom layer here, go to Effect, Distort, and we're gonna grab Displacement Map. There's a few settings we need to adjust here. So we're gonna set our Displacement Map layer to our map, set our source to Effects and Mask, and then go to the Displacement right here, set to Luminous, set that green to Luminous as well, go to the Center Map, set this to Stretch Map to Fit, check on Wrap Pixels Around. Okay, so so far the image is completely broken up. So we need to go to our map layer and go to effect, blur, sharpen, and grab a Gaussian blur. And we'll set this Gaussian blur up to 200 for now. We're gonna, we're gonna have to increase that setting, but I wanna show you what happens 
and make sure you check on repeat edge pixels. Before we roll on, if you're looking to produce professional work inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro, check out our Motion Graphics Advanced Pack which has 750 plus templates for all your post-production motion graphic needs. That link will be in the description and if you pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. Alright, so let's go ahead and take the scene and really make it come to life. The two parameters here that we need to focus on is max horizontal and vertical uh, displacement. So what we're going to do is we can set these both down to zero. So if the scene will be completely normal, we can add a keyframe for both of these if you want. You can move forward in your timeline four or five seconds or however long you want this to be. And we're going to increase the max displacement. Now, as I adjust the setting by a little bit, the scene becomes really distorted. The distortion of the scene is really going to depend on the blurriness setting of the scene. So if I increase the say to 400, it's going to help smooth this out a little bit and make it a little bit less distorted. So now with our scene in here, we have this very subtle movement. It really just looks like it's animated in the house. So you can go ahead and increase that setting by a little bit more. And we can also adjust the vertical displacement. Now we don't want to go too far with this effect because it can look distorted, but go ahead and increase that uh, Gaussian blur to kind of smooth that out. Okay, so, so far we have this very subtle, you know, fake, ish 3d look here but we need to help sell this a little bit more add a little bit more movement to this without distorting the image so a quick thing that we could do is go ahead and create a null object or a layer new null and we'll parent both these layers to the null just like that and we'll hit p on keyboard and shift s for scale so we got position and scale here we'll add a keyframe for both of these and maybe i'll actually have my scene start over here on the left side by a little bit because i have a little extra room because this is a vector scene and then i'll come here to four seconds and i can have the x position move over here to the right and i'm also going to scale in to our image so maybe like go to 115 percent so this will create somewhat of a camera movement and now with our movement and our fake parallax we can have something like this your scene will depend on how much detail you have and what you select for this uh, but that's just a couple of tips you can take this effect even further with an optics compensation look here so what i did here is i added an adjustment layer set that optics compensation to zero keyframed it from zero to about 70 ish make sure you check on reverse lens distortion and you'll get a look like this so i'm not a big fan of that optics compensation for something like this but if you want to have it you can pull it off okay so let's say you have no vector object that you can break apart maybe this is a jpeg I don't know, but I'm going to show you how you can do this without actually having the individual layers. Um, it's really easy to do this. It's just not as clean and might take a little bit more effort. So very quickly, what you can do is grab the pen tool, make sure your layer isn't selected, and you can just create a mask, a rough one, kind of around the objects in your scene. And obviously we want to make this purely black here. And then maybe we'll create a layer new solid and we'll make sure that this is set to complete white and we'll just have this in the background for sure and we kind of hide both these layers so now we can start you know selecting other you know objects in the scene and creating those individual shape layers manually and of course this isn't perfect but i just want to show you that you can pull this off so let's just say we want to animate these two which isn't a lot of detail but you really can get detail with this we can select both our shape layers pre-compose it and as before we can just take that gaussian blur put it on there and then I'll just go ahead and just copy paste this placement map settings real quick and we'll turn off the map. And just to show you that you can get a very similar movement. So obviously it's very rough. I only did like two objects in pure black uh, for that depth map, but you can get really much in depth and control your shot. You can make it very similar to how we did it in our primary example. So, you know, that's completely up to you, but that's how you would pull it off without an actual vector scene. So now you can add a little bit of 3D camera movement to your scene. Remember to keep it, you know, subtle. Don't go over the top with it because you can only push it so far. But for the most part, you can create a little bit of a fake 3D look uh, for your motion graphics. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on Slumduck Film. You can also hit us up on Instagram. We got tutorials on there as well. And always be creating.